Now, from KC24, your local election headquarters, with your host, Evan Onstott. This is Sunday Morning Matters. Hey there, good morning and happy Father's Day, dads. Thanks for starting off your day right here with us. We are talking immigration today. Congressman Jim Costa spoke on the House floor this week, calling for an end to the practice of separating children from their parents at the border and demanding a true effort towards comprehensive reform. I stand here today calling on Congress to move on immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform that is bipartisan. Let's put an end to these immoral, cruel, and un-American policies. Uh, if we can't do that, then let's just try to bring a clean dream act to the floor. Uh, I guess we'll see what comes next week in terms of what's being proposed. Now, moderate Republicans' efforts to force a vote on four different immigration bills hit a dead end this week and a discharge petition that was supported and signed by Valley Congressman Jeff Denham and David Valadeo failed to get enough Republican support amid opposition from House Speaker Paul Ryan, who's now putting together his own immigration bill. Congressman Valadeo, so good to have you with us on Sunday Morning Matters. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. So let's talk about this discharge petition. You signed this thing back in May, I believe. Uh, fell a couple votes short. Now some of these votes that you were hoping to push uh, not going to happen. Is this a big setback for you? Because I've seen it described that way. Well, it's not. It's obviously not the favorable way to go. Um, the discharge petition was a couple signatures uh, short. Uh, you need 218, and it doesn't matter how many members of Congress there are, uh, because you know one has passed away, and we've got a few that are no longer in office. Uh, but you do need 218, uh, the majority of uh, the number of seats there are in Congress. Uh, we fell too short. We had every single Democrat on board, and we had two Republicans we needed, and uh, they were able to get pushed off of uh, signing on. And so we're a little frustrated. Uh, now we're negotiating to see what the next path forward is uh, legislation was just introduced a few hours ago or released and we got to uh, we're just getting a chance to look at the, uh, the few hundred pages of it uh, <laughs> so trying to figure out exactly where to go on this one uh, they're looking to have a vote next week all right well good well, t well tell me what you know right now because I know one of the things that got pushed away when the discharge petition failed was the vote on on a dream act a, a DACA giving them some sort of protections from what you've been able to hear and what you've been able to see so far is this new piece of legislation that Paul Ryan has put together is that included including anything to do with dreamers? Yes, it is. Uh, there is a component in there that deals with dreamers. Uh, it, it basically follows the same exact uh, uh, criteria as President Obama's uh, DACA, so the same group of people would be uh, qualified for it. And so the number of folks out there is actually uh, the number that President Trump threw out there some time ago when he made his offer. Uh, we assume it'd be about 1.8 million uh, kids, uh, young adults, that would qualify for this. You know, I've heard from a lot of Democrats who just think that using the, the DACA issue is just it's just wrong to begin with, to use it as a bargaining tool, that this was a problem created by the president giving it that deadline, and that to use it is just disingenuous. And I'm curious if you agree with that in any way. No, I don't necessarily agree with that for a few different reasons. Uh, back uh, John Boehner, when he was a speaker, uh, tried to get President Obama to hold off a little bit on DACA. He thought he can get something done. Uh, President Obama didn't wait, and it kind of went downhill from there. And then now we've got the opportunity to move forward with this president. And when this president first came in, you had a lawsuit come up uh, from the state of Texas and a few other states, kind of the opposite of what the state of California did, where they actually sued saying DACA was unconstitutional. And DAPA, the uh, Deferred Action for Parenthood Arrivals, has already lost the federal court, uh, has already lost Supreme Court, and has been found unconstitutional. There's a lot of Republicans and Democrats who seem to believe that if that court case does move forward and it goes to Supreme Court, that DACA could go away and uh, all those kids that are there uh, would be no longer protected. So President Trump said, hold off on the lawsuit, give us until March uh, to make this happen because they really wanted him to eliminate DACA Im immediately and he gave us that window. So I feel like the president was actually doing his best to be reasonable on this issue. He made his offer, he's got his four pillars and uh, the bill that uh, Speaker Ryan or whoever is going to actually author it to introduce it uh, is pretty much President Trump's uh, four pillars. Well, and let me ask you about that because I know that, that Speaker Ryan has said that there's no point in putting forward any sort of uh, piece of legislation that the president is not going to support but the president you know he has very specific you mentioned the four pillars he's very specific some say even hardline views when it comes to immigration and so I'm curious do you think that there is a bill out there that the president would support and would also work for people here in the Central Valley that you represent 
Well, the two main pillars of this piece of legislation uh, are actually reasonable. When you look at the amount of people that would be affected by this piece of legislation, it's actually more than what the DREAM Act and other piece of legislation in the House would affect. 1.8 million is a large number, uh, and it, it, it would have a direct impact on those folks. It would ultimately give them what we call now a bridge to citizenship instead of a path. Uh, it changes some visas, moves them around, uh, it repurposes them as the word that we're using, uh, and it allows kids who are under DACA to potentially have not potentially, to have the ability to move forward as long as they qualify um, under all the same provisions as DACA. And then it also has the, the border security component of it. And President Trump has been asking for $25 billion. So Democrats are not a fan of that, and we hear a lot of opposition to that. But you have to remember, the Gang of Eight bill that passed out of the Senate uh, back in 2013 with pretty much every single Democrat senator uh, that was elected at that time voting for it had over 30 billion, almost 40 billion in it for border security. So this isn't something that hasn't been voted on by Democrats in the past. Maybe they want to play politics with it now, uh, but President Trump has actually offered a path to citizenship for quite a number of folks, and but he's also asking for border security. And with what we've got going on in the Central Valley and around the country, there's a there's a very reasonable and rational argument to, to make for securing our border and make sure bad people don't have the ability to come in and do us harm. And there's a lot of people also looking at a guest worker program. They want to get something like yeah. that put together. Is this Speaker Ryan piece of legislation, does that include anything about a guest worker program? No, it doesn't, but there are two. So this new plan changes things a little bit. The discharge petition actually brought up the good lot bill with amendments, and the other three amendments would have been first the DREAM Act, second would have been Speaker Ryan's bill, whatever he wanted to be, and third would be the USA Act, which was a compromise. Uh, but the good lot bill does have a guest worker in it, and then the Freedom Caucus held up the farm bill over, um, over the good lot bill. They actually wanted a vote on that before they would vote on the farm bill. So, uh, but now with this new development, Good lot bill will be coming up. I don't believe it'll pass because the ag provisions still don't uh, work to the benefit, or at least it doesn't have enough ag support, um, and his DACA provisions aren't going to get any Democrat support, and it will be severely lacking in the Republican support. As far as the border security component is strong on the border, uh, that bill will come up first, and then after that bill comes up and we expect it to fail, uh, then that would actually, uh, we would have the vote for the rule, and then to bring up Speaker Ryan's bill, um, which is the compromise, which is essentially um, the four pillars. And do you think that that will pass? It's going to be tough. Uh, I, we're already starting to hear a little bit from Freedom Caucus that the majority of them are supportive. I think Meadows is supportive. Uh, I know there are going to be some that are going to fall off, and I know there's going to be some of the more moderate members who aren't going to be a fan. Uh, but at the end of the day, it gives uh, kids who came here no fault of their own immediate uh, security and knowing that they're not going to be deported, and it gives them the opportunity to ultimately become citizens. Uh, it's going to be a real tough vote for Democrats and even some of the moderates to vote against, those who are absolutely against any sort of border security, I don't know how you defend that at home. Uh, I was on the border not long ago watching them uh, bring in captured cocaine, 47 million pounds. Uh, we've got issues even here in the Central Valley with, uh, with MS-13 and other, other gangs. I mean, we've got issues with trafficking of uh, folks. And there's something that needs to be said for securing the border, and I think it's a reasonable argument. Uh, so I don't know, if, you're, if someone's going to vote against us just because of border security, I think that's going to be a tough sell at home. Well, let me ask you this, because from what I can tell, you and Speaker Ryan get along. We just had you guys together here in the Central Valley, and yeah. uh, Kevin McCarthy as well. But it was those two gentlemen who really pushed back against this discharge petition. I'm curious, has this strained your working relationship at all? No, it hasn't. I mean, discharge petition uh, against your own party is not something people like to do. But you have to remember that Speaker Ryan, before he was Speaker, when he was in the minority, uh, as McCarthy and pretty much every other Republican in leadership, they've signed a discharge petitions before, but it was against other leadership. It's not something you normally do against your own leadership because you work within the system, but we were really frustrated. We needed something to move. We wanted to get a vote. Uh, we felt like it was a reasonable position because it wasn't a discharge on a specific bill without amendments, but we were actually bringing up some creative solutions and, and even giving leadership the opportunity with that third slot to offer whatever piece of legislation they wanted to. But at the end of the day, the clock is ticking. We needed something to get done. Even the President of the United States has beaten us up on uh, social media saying that you guys need to do something on, uh, on immigration. All the administration folks from ICE to uh, Homeland Security have said, we're going to follow the law unless you guys change it, until you guys change it. So that's their signal saying, if you don't like it, fix it. And that's Congress's job. And so well, a lot of us were really frustrated. We wanted to see something move forward. This discharge petition with the rule was flexible enough that it gave leadership the ability to make the changes they want, offered them the opportunity to make uh, 
fixes in rules uh, in the rules committee before it came to the floor. It, it was a reasonable approach and we did it as best we could to try to come to a solution so the president could actually sign it and help these kids. Congressman Valadeo, thank you for your time as always. We appreciate it. No, anytime. Thanks for having me. And coming up after the break, I'm going to sit down with David Valadeo's district director, Justin Mendez. He's giving South Valley Assemblyman Rudy Salas all he can handle in this election and then some. That's next.